Hello friends, I hope all of you are healthy and fine and it's nice to be here once again after a gap of few weeks. Uh, I'm sorry for that because I was a little busy with my routine life in college. And uh, I remember that I promised you in my last video that I am going to release a new video series on some clinical examination. Uh, I'm working upon that and it will be there for you very soon. But uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, right now we are in the first quarter of this year. And first quarter of every year is quite special during student life. Because this is the time when majority of students are very close to their university exams, which includes theory as well as practical exams. And I'm sure that at least for once in your life, you must have felt that your performance in theory exam was not satisfactory. Either you were not able to write what was there in your mind or your marks were not up to the, your expectations. So all these things motivated me to make this special video, which includes uh, common difficulties and mistakes which are done by the students uh, during those three crucial hours and what are the possible ways to overcome them. So I would request you to please watch this video till the end. You will definitely find many new interesting things in it. Well, we all know that in theory exam, uh, one student is expected to write multiple answers in a single answer sheet, which is a difficult job. But at the same time, we should not forget that an examiner is expected to check multiple answer sheets in a limited period of time, which is again not an easy job. So here, the presentation matters a lot. If there is an answer sheet in which everything is written neatly in a beautiful handwriting, then it will be very easy for the examiner to read it and to assess the knowledge of the student. But at the same time, if there is something which is written in a very congested way in a not so good handwriting, so it may not be so easy or rather it may be a little annoying for the examiner to go through such answer sheets. So the handwriting plays a major role here and uh, I have personally seen many times that uh, the student has got uh, the perfect knowledge of the question but uh, I had to put a lot of stress in reading what is written in front of me. So the good handwriting is desirable but may be difficult for some students and at this point I would like to blame it to the technology because you know nowadays we are spending most of our time on the gadgets like laptop and smartphone and so the uh, writing work which we used to do few years ago now that work is shrinking and because of this lack of practice we can see the complications we many times see that the students are getting fatigued in the last hour in the examination hall and uh, uh, the same thing is reflected in their answer sheet also because it was something which had was started with a, uh, a beautiful handwriting but after a third or fourth question there is an obvious worsening of the handwriting so since this complication is mainly because of lack of practice, uh, it can be improved by practice only. So it's my suggestion to you that keep practicing at your home, keep writing something for at least 15-20 minutes every day at your home and make sure that when you are writing you are sitting on a table and a chair and try to use the same pen which you are going to use in your examination hall. And believe me, your handwriting, your writing speed and your writing capacity all will definitely improve with this practice. Now coming back to the presentation part and as I told you that uh, good handwriting is desirable but it is difficult for some students and uh, even if you practice it will need some time. So uh, even if you, your handwriting is average, still you can improve your presentation in theory paper by following three suggestions. The very first suggestion is about the spacing. Do not write in very lengthy and congested paragraphs. Instead of that, my suggestion is that you should leave at least some space or at least one line after one or two lines. So what will happen that the same thing, it will become less difficult for your examiner to read if it is presented in that way. Well, your important points may be lost uh, in those lengthy and congested paragraphs, but uh, the chances are high that your examiner will read them if you have written them in uh, form of multiple lines with adequate space in between them. Well, the second suggestion to improve your presentation is about the highlighting and which uh, many students do in different ways. Now, you see that every question has got some punch points and if I am writing about it, then I want to be very sure that my examiner will catch those punch points easily. 
Say for example, if I am writing about uh, thyroglossal cyst, then this cyst moves upward with protrusion of tongue. Or uh, if uh, uh, one of the complications is that uh, the papillary carcinoma may develop in it, or uh, we perform a cyst trunks operation, or we have to do uh, ideally we have to do a radio uh, iodine scan before excision. So all these things are the punch points of this question. So if I am writing something on my answer sheet and if my examiner, even if he is fatigued or even if my answer sheet is coming in the very late stage, still I would be, I would like to be very sure that he catches at least these points. So this is easily done by highlighting. Now I've seen that uh, many students do these underlining work at the end of the paper. Means for last 10-15 minutes, they reserve it for this work. That's a good thing. But what if you don't get that time? Your whole plan will be spoiled if, uh, you know, because of any reason, if you are not having any time in the end, just even for a single underlining, so this everything will be, become flop. Uh, some students have seen that uh, they use multiple colors. That's a better method, but still don't forget that it will take even more time because you have to change multiple pens. So my suggestion to you is, uh, is that uh, it's a good method, but try to do it simultaneously. Now what is happening if I am writing something, if I am in this question, if I am writing that it is moving up, it moves upward with the protrusion of tongue or and I know that this is that punch point. So instead of relying for those last 10, 15 minutes, what I would prefer that at that point only with the same pen, no need to use multicolored pen, with the same pen, I will make an underline or two underlines or a wavy line or a box or whatever. So what will happen? My suggestion is that highlighting is a good method. You must practice it, do it. But it will be even better if you keep on doing it simultaneously. And third session to improve your presentation is that uh, try to make maximum possible presentation in form of diagrams, flowcharts, tables, etc. You don't have to uh, make an artistic or a very beautiful diagram. But even if there is an average diagram and if you have labeled it properly. So what happens that such type of presentations, they are easy to be assessed by the examiner. So the same knowledge, instead of writing them in lengthy lines or in congested paragraphs, it will be better if you disperse them in form of level diagrams or flowcharts or tables. Well, there is an additional advantage of uh, such presentations. You see, other than the handwriting, another important point in our exams is grammar. Now, it is not so important in medical science, but still uh, it may affect the mood of some examiners. Now what will happen that if you will write everything in form of lines and paragraphs, now more you will write like that, the chances are high that some of you may unintentionally do some grammatical mistakes. But if you do the same thing in form of dispersed points, not in form of sentences, so there will be no scope of doing any grammatical mistake. So my advice is that read from the book, but don't try to write a book in examination hall. Now next to the presentation, the, the most important skill for any theory exam is about the time management. Now we know that uh, we get a limited period of time for theory exam and we have to attempt multiple questions in that. And uh, obviously all questions are not equal for everyone. So we find that some questions uh, are easy for us or rather we are more confident in those topics. So what we do, we try to attempt those questions first and the remaining questions we do later. But that's a good habit and uh, everybody uh, does it. Uh, but uh, the problem arrives if we spend excessive time in one or two questions. Now we have seen several times that uh, the student has written beautifully. The first question, second question is okay, third question is okay. But in the later part, we try to, we see that uh, the handwriting is deteriorating or it is, uh, it, it is obvious that he is writing in a great speed. And even the worst thing is that sometimes some students are unable to attempt one or two questions just because of lack of time. Now remember two rules here. Number one, even if you have written everything for any question, no examiner in the world will be able to give you more than the maximum possible marks. Say if it's the question is of 10 marks and if you have written everything, I will not be able to give you 11 out of 10. 
And number two, if you have not attempted any question, again, no examiner in the world will be able to give you even a single mark for that question. Now, this is obviously very disappointing and nothing can be more unfortunate than that, that you know the answer of some questions, but you are unable to write only because of lack of time. And that was only because you spent excessive time in one or two questions. So this problem can be easily handled or can be easily avoided by doing proper time management. Now let us understand this time management with the example of one question paper. Uh, see, we get uh, three years for any theory exam and in many universities you, you get to MCQs. So uh, just for a while imagine that uh, you got to initial 20 or 30 minutes for MCQs and for the remaining paper, that means the long question and short note, you are getting two and a half hours. That means 150 minutes. Now imagine that your question paper is of 75 marks. So 150 minutes for 75 marks, that means two minutes for one mark. So this is a very simple equation. Now what will happen if uh, your long question is of 15 marks, 30 minutes for it. If your short note is of five marks, 10 minutes for it. And if there's something like very short note, which is of only two or three marks, then just four, five, six minutes for that is enough. Well, this is not a very hard and fast rule, but it is only to remind you that please do not spend a lot of time in a single question. Say for example, if uh, the long question is of 15 marks and you have allotted 30 minutes for it, then you'll have to tell it to yourself that uh, you're supposed to write a satisfactory answer of this question in approximately 30 minutes. Few minutes here and there, no problem. But the problem may arise if you suppose you spend 45 minutes or one hour for that one question. And so it is important to keep a continuous watch on time during your theory exams. Well, uh, and for that, it is essential to carry a wristwatch in examination hall. Uh, that sounds a little strange, but I observed that uh, some students, they don't carry a wristwatch. Again, blame it to the technology because now the smartphone has replaced many things, but unfortunately that is not allowed in your examination hall. And the place uh, where you are sitting in the examination hall, it is not essential that the wall clock will be always visible to you from there. So it will be better to keep your wristwatch on the table and when you are attempting the question, keep an eye on the time also. Well, the only intention of this method is to prevent you from giving excessive time to a single question and the time management simply means that you should divide the time in proportion of marks of the questions. So that's all for this short and special video on how to improve your presentation in theory exam and how to do the time management. Well, all these are quite simple and basic suggestions, but uh, I hope that they'll be quite useful for you uh, in your next theory exams. Uh, my best wishes for you. And if you like this video, please share it with your other exam going friends. Also, I would like to thank all of you for your uh, uh, positive response and feedback uh, on my previous video series on examination of swellings. And as I told you in the beginning of this video, I'm working upon another video series and I'll be back very soon with some new videos. So to stay with me, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon and we'll meet again very soon. Till then, stay healthy, stay happy and always keep learning in your life. Goodbye.